Welcome back, everybody. It's Chris and Aaron. Hello. What up? What up? Hello. Uh, how do you want to Two bold white guys. Here we go. <laughs> That's our tagline. That Two is our tagline. Uh, too mindful. Uh, bald white guys. Yes. I know we need Alan back. I won't apologize. What I want to I want to know what uh, we were we are having some good stuff and then I got uh, before we hit record and I got a little bit um, solemn and yes a little suppressed <laughs> a little suppressed and I was like oh better record this because this is important yeah this is gonna be a good one we're we're touching yeah. on something yeah touching on nerves here so the the conversation starts with this okay the the love of ideation versus the dread of execution mm, okay. um because and I find myself in that place like I love I. I miss having been a Renaissance philosopher yeah, where I could yeah. literally just sit around and think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that that's, that would be a life. Just, just here's my ideas, right? Yeah. Here's yeah. what I think things are like without any press to actually perform in any way, <laughs> just ideation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, when I said, I suppose, you know, I mean, I suppose you could do that. I suppose you could be, uh, you'd have to be an author, which is then you're executing something, right? Yeah. You're writing. Yeah. So there's some level of execution there. And then there's, you know, I mean, the books that resonate with me, Adam Grant and the Sean Aker and the, uh, Seth Godin and, mm. you know, yeah. anyone who resonates with me really has done an, a massive amount of research and background work yeah. to Right. So that's all in the world of execution. Um, it's not just simply uh, ideation or execute. Oh, oh, because it's the execution of the writing of it and stuff. Yeah. Sure. And it's the execution of the um, research and the yeah. formulating of those. It's not just merely ideation. So anyway, we're, that's what we got into is the, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, the right. sludge of executing, right. And the fear and the, um, you know, the, Concern the demand for performance and the demand to actually get something accomplished and weigh it against the committed outcome, you know, an intention and to see all that, that all lives in the world of execution. Ideation has none of that threat. Um, and I was always, I always thought it'd be fun to, you know, when I owned the restaurant, when I owned the bakery the, yeah. back in the day, it, that was definitely my favorite part was the thinking, the planning, and the putting it together, and the opening, and I thought, oh, if I could just go around and open restaurants, not have to run them, but just open them, yeah, that would be great. Um, but that's not the way my life works. I don't. I'm not saying that's not the way life works, but it's certainly not the way my life works. Sure. I have a there's a demand that I perform from somewhere. Right. This is um, man. This gets sticky, but I keep going. Okay, what did you what did you want to get sticky here? I, well, I, it's like you know, this is this is the 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 tension between mindful and CEO. This is the this is the tension because <clears throat> you know I've spent the last week in um in non non striving, you know, two weeks, the last two weeks in a space of intentionally executing <laughs> on on non striving, you know, doing non doing and mm -hmm. uh. It's been very freeing. I, there's this again. I, I mean, there's this belief. Do I believe that that I have put things in my vortex and they're on their way to me, and that it's okay to be lazy? Mm -hmm. These are all things Abraham says. I'm like, I like that. I'm down with that. <laughs> Do is that how it actually works? Am I? Is there a, a a moment of belief where I go all in and surrender to that? Because execution well, on the other side of that feels like okay. Well, feels like you're saying that. There, you have to have execution. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I spent a lot of time now hearing people say I don't. Right. Well, it's good, Chris, because I mean, I did at least back off and say that's not how my life works. <laughs> yeah, right? I got that. I um, give me the same freedom. Thank you. Right. Because it is that opening. And, um, you know, this is OK. So there is, is this is all sticky and messy and why I wanted to record because <laughs> we wanted to work this out because we don't have the answer here. Because yeah. one thing I was thinking of is. um. You know, when you, when I execute and I win, yeah, it's the best fucking thing in the world. There's really yeah. nothing better than having nailed in reality, 
that outcome being produced, right? Whether it's, you know, things that I lead where I say, call the shot, this is the result that's going to produce. Yeah. And then it happens um, that it could be that execution isn't this demand on me from the outside happening to me like I have to. But really, when I look at it, when I look at what I've created for myself, what the most fun I have is. Yeah. Yeah. Is I like watching actual things happen in reality. It's it's funny because I um hmm. before before I had season tickets to the Seahawks, I used to go to their um practices. Hmm. You know, they do <clears throat> yeah, preseason, whatever, right? Training camp. Yeah. And I'd go to, to training camp. And uh I mean, I get it on a nerd level, like it's vaguely I, I, I can see how one might be interested if they it's potential yeah. to be interested in that. Um, but it's not a, it's not a game. There's no score. Right. Right. They can't possibly lose. It's got none of the excitement or the energy, huh. you know, of the win lose phenomena. Hmm. And uh, this is good because I have been dominated by execution like I have to, mm -hmm. uh, what a drag, and I'm scared to, right? Versus I created my life as mm. a performer and a performer performs, yeah. executes, performs, same word. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes the ball goes in and sometimes it doesn't, but the fun is in, when it's in the air. Mm -hmm. The real joy in life is that moment where that ball goes up. And then if it goes in, hmm. oh, dude, there's yeah. that's peak. Yeah. Peak, peak, peak. Yeah. 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 You know? Um, yeah. You say but, performer, I hear artists. Like if I think about the but, way I've been reframing it for myself, I'm like, I love <clears throat> being in conversation with people. I love creating community. I love having deep conversations. I, you know, it is not a problem for me to put zoom meetings on my calendar to hear what people are up to in their life. That's I'm like, that's fun. That's great. And right. if that turns into a partnership for a community or that turns into a podcast episode, all of that, I'm like, that's great. None of that feels like the word execution feels, you know, that all just feels creative. <clears throat> And I think that's where the rub is semantically. Is okay, like, well, let's look. Let's look at that. Suppose, you know, those those calls don't just magically show up on your... This is so good, Chris, because look, let's, these, those calls don't just show up on your calendar. Yeah. You have to have enough conversations where and put yourself out there enough where you're a resource for people like me and the other people you work with. Um, and you're seen that way. And that's all execution. It, yeah, if yes, I, it, X's and O's. Yeah, you could you could call that execution. And just the feeling of it doesn't feel the the dread, the angst, the yeah, right. I hate to. I love ideation. I hate execution. Yes. Like, I don't have any of the angst around. And and what is it? So that's good. So then, what is it? Because look, uh, uh, you know, a million leaders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We talk about this all the time. The execution of a plan. Yeah. Right. What is it that has execution feel dominating or striving feel, do, you know, striving feel like no. um, mm -hmm. not getting there versus have it feel like play, which is then connected to this whole thing, the new exploration and happiness that we've got going on. Right. I was yeah. thinking about it this morning about a topic for the show could be the relationship play with fun or uh, uh, play with happiness. Uh, yeah. 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 And I think that's a, and that thing about playing yeah. versus playing a game. Yeah. As separate things or. Those are separate things. Uh, playing, playing is practice. Playing is when I go to training camp, they're watching them play. They're just playing. There's no score. Mm, sure, sure. Yeah, just yeah. playing. Right. Kids with a pot and pan on the ground or, you know, yeah. turn over a box of yarn and crayons and they're playing, but they're not playing a game. Mm, mm. A game is. Over there is more important than over here. Mm. We got to get over there. We've just invented it. Now we have a game that over that, which is not yet is more important than what is. 
Mm-hmm. That's at the heart of every game. There's no game you have that you're not creating something that is not right, yet. Right. That's good. Yeah. Right. I get that. And then, um, You know, and I think that striving that um, the the negative connotation with striving. Yeah. You know, because it comes, I think a large part of it comes when you forget or pretend choose um that you didn't invent the game Hmm. Hmm. sure so then i'm complaining about something that i'm involved in as if i didn't have a say in it as if like somebody made me do this somebody's making me that's why podcast that's why you talking to podcasters like this doesn't occur as striving although you do have an intention to have you know a thousand people lead a thousand people Yep. yep. Right. That's yep. a, you could, that's striving. That's what isn't yet is more important than what is. Yeah. Right. To, yeah. To your point, I am, the, to your definition, I am playing a game. There is a, there is a, a gap between where I am and what I'm, where I'm headed, what I'm intending. Right. And the occurring of it is very different when you, are at the source of it, which really comes down to this whole thing about the cathedral again, goes loops back to that conversation about you are in the presence of when, when you, me, one of the five people listening (laughs) is in the presence of what they're up to, Mm -hmm. what they're fulfilling on, what matters to them. Yeah. There's no striving. There's no, you know, I really, we should really talk to a mindfulness master about this because this is something that is beyond my, I mean, I'm in the inquiry of it, but I would love to hear what someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about has to say about it. Although I would suspect they would say they don't know what they're talking about, but. um, They'll ask a question. (laughs) Right. You know, but that thing for non-striving is a principle of. um, Yeah. Mindfulness. Or even in Tantra, what did we call it in Tantra? Um, uh, 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 uh. I want to find that again. Because I love the way it was presented in Tantra. By the way, if anyone wants to talk to us about or talk to me about Tantra, you should just reach out because there's a great Tantra workshop coming up on Zoom. It's a Tantric date night coming up, Chris. I'll I'll send you the link to it because it's very cool by my teachers and they're just they're just the sweetest people Hmm. and uh i i'll check and see if it's for uh give up goal orientation that's how it's said oh sure in uh margaret anand says the tantric attitude is give up goal orientation um you know direction without a destination yeah that's right. So, so interesting. Yeah. But there's that, you know, I think it's that domination comes from pretending you didn't make that up, pretending it's inherent or it's real or it's is inherently outside of us. Right. It's significance. I think we're just talking about removing the significance from it and allowing you to what you talking to podcasters occurs like play. Right. And when you say significance, like the pressure of yeah. significance, not the impact, not significance as impact, but significance as pressure. Yeah. Not, not significance as, as a press, uh, as an oppressive yeah. deadline like, versus right, right. significance, <laughs> like the real difference you're out to make. Right. Right. Not yeah. insignificant, right? If you again, right, that's good because if you define significance like the difference you're out to make is insignificant, I think you lose the power of what it is you're up to. There's it no begins juice, to no feel juice, like, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, there's no juice in it. Yeah. Um, and it becomes, and resignation is accessible from that side. <laughs> you know, when you when yeah. you decide nothing I do makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. 
right? right? Nothing I do makes a real difference. But even that said, that word difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has an has an implication that there's something that's not yet. Yeah. That I've said is important to be present. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? without having it get oppressive and without having it get um mm. meaning uh, uh meaningless in uh, and uh, this just goes back to forum 101 really is that it's empty and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless so that if there's significance in it if there's importance in it if if there's um yeah, if there's importance in it, it's because I put it there. Yeah. And then as soon as you get grounded in I put it there, yeah, you can be empowered in getting in taking the actions to fulfill on that. Right. It's the abdication of responsibility of who put it there. Yeah. That makes it oppressive. Yeah. Yeah. There there's a there's a piece of that that um I mean, it would be helpful to if we just ground this into what you and I actually do to, to, like f for me lately, with the, met I'll I'll say meditating on, but you know not like in a lotus pose, just walking my dogs and mm -hmm. chewing on non striving. Like the I I have caught myself. So how it works is about fifteen minutes. I'll be it's a thirty minute walk. So fifteen minutes, I just start with like the word non striving, and I'm like, um appreciating um, what I have, appreciating what is, there's just, um, I start to notice all the things in my life that have produced a result, like in a game, like where, you know, you're scoring a touch, like, you know, you, there's an, there's all this stuff that's happened that I actually didn't do anything for. Like my relationship with my wife, I didn't, I could not have like intentionally gone out and found her and had the conversations we had. And it, it unfolded the way it unfolded. I didn't, there was no forcing that. There was no, right. Chris is going to go find a wife on match.com. And I, I, I don't know how that happened. That just happened. Right. How you and I even came to having this community. I'm like, I don't, I mean, I can't find a particular moment. Your, our relationship in has, has been in motion for over 20 years. Like there's just numerous things. So anyway, you get the point. Like I just start in the non-striving of things. I just start to notice how many things have worked in my favor that I didn't execute for and then i'll and then i what i've also been doing is i've been looking at all the things i've tried to execute on that have resulted in shit mm. and the, the 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 imbalance of how much has my life has worked through providence through the invisible hand through right. non-striving versus how much of my life has worked out because i executed something is completely imbalanced way more in my right. life has come through non-striving than through yes. what I've actually tried to produce serendipity. Yes. 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 But those that's those moments of serendipity have come by acting, not by sitting quietly in a Lotus pose, enjoying the thought they've called you into action. Yes. In a way Yes. That you've taken on and decided that that's the yeah. next action to take. And that's, that's right. That's the tension. And I love that you brought up the tension between mindful and CEO, that tension between those two things. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, and I think that tension is fun to play with mm. as long as you're responsible for that you put the tension there. Yeah. I think if you, if yeah, the yeah. tension comes from the outside, from something you have to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that it becomes burdensome. What were you going to say? Well, the, the, that's the other, the other piece that's there for me on that walk is then I've noticed and I've, I've been practicing how to unhook myself from the, ang the angst of performance, the angst of um, having to do something. So I'll be non, I'll think about, uh, all those, uh, um, I can even think about that tension of <clears throat> mindfulness and CEO. And I'll think, um, my, my thoughts will trail towards, I need to do something and then I'll unhook it and be like, uh, 
I'm an artist. This is art. What would I, what would I want to create? This is a creation. And as long as I pull myself back to the context of something creative, playful, artistic, happy, fun, I can get access to a next step. Be like, oh, I would, I'm going to love to talk to this person. I can't wait to do this thing. And it puts me back in a constructive execution, a creative, I want to paint this canvas versus where I go when it's shitty execution is like, I, I go hide. I, I'm like, I don't want to do anything. Right. Yeah. I'm just looking over the tenets of the tantric attitude here, mm. which include um, enjoy spontaneity. Mm. Cultivate pleasure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. learn self-love, drop guilt, mm -hmm. discover meditation, give up goal orientation, allow surrender. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, it, there's the automatic tension between those spaces mm -hmm. and the, I have to get somewhere sure. and then I'll be happy when I get there versus... Right. You know, the hmm. play along the way yeah. is the point. Yeah, yeah. You know, and hmm. Hmm. It, and then there's and then there's the high of achieving the result. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, there sure. there is that high of, you know, mm -hmm. hit it. Uh, hitting the goal. So there's giving up goal orientation and then there's the high of, yeah, you know, winning the game. Right. Right. Of, of hitting it, that yeah, there's yeah. A, a real, there is a real high for me in hitting it. You know, I mean, I was the last two weeks of the, of the Seahawks come to mind for me hmm. as that, like the moment there was a moment where they, you know, two weeks ago when they won the game in the last 30 seconds, hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. a that was a fucking high. There was I, I don't have any wow. bombs about saying that was a high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then last, then this last game last week they got trounced thirty seven to three. Wow. And that was not a high. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that there was no enjoyment in that game and. You know, even what what's the difference? And that's sort of an obvious one. You know, the difference between winning and getting your ass kicked. Mm. Um, it's easy to see the difference. But what if you lose at the last second? You know, what if you're on the other side of getting beat? So that for, mm. you know, the entire game, it's, you know, what do those two spaces feel like? And um, never the whole conversation about giving my sense of enjoyment up to the results other people produce right which is nothing to do with me right forget about yeah yeah the insanity of my giving my enjoyment to professional sports which is a whole separate conversation i think <laughs> that i would be willing to have my week determined by the outcomes that people that yeah, young yeah. that the, the outcome that you know these other Mind, people produce yeah, yeah. mindful sports right? man yeah right yeah. which is not something you do is that's my enjoyment of sports is that tension there. But aside from that, you know, when I look at my own personal games, the things I do have a say over, hmm. um, it's like that, hmm. like the ability. All right. Pause the recording for a second. Cause I got, uh, so as we were saying, right <laughs> back at the ranch. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, that's the inquiry to be in, you know, when you're in the midst of moving from ideation to execution is keeping the balance between, okay, what's real here or in what's invented, uh, you know, is this outcome that the idea is out to produce true or not? Is it useful or not? Is it, is it going to make the difference that my life is out to make? Um, and who said that that's important? Right. Is it in, you know, is it, if it's, as long as it may, as long as I maintain the attitude towards it, that, um, that it's mine, 
I made it up. Right. I'm the one who said it's important, you know, and that this is consistent with what I've said my life is for, Mm. that there's a greater likelihood of it having power, of it empowering me versus it dominating me. Um, Yeah. You know, I remember... I mean, I think the um, uh, principle of you're always going to be dominated by something is Mm -hmm. useful in that. You know, you're if you stand in, I'm always going to be dominated by something. I'm either dominated by my thoughts, my feelings, or my word. I'm either dominated by my fears, my concerns, my worries, or you know, what I've created is what I'm up to hmm. because I don't think you have a choice to not be dominated. I don't think that's a choice you get, hmm. you know, that you're always going to be dominated by something. You know, and that, dominated could be interpreted as driven by something. Yeah. There's yeah. that, you know, there's that oppressive sense of domination, but, but I could think about how I can't stop thinking about I just, I can't, I don't know. I can't turn off all my ideas about how I want to grow to a million, you know, leaders of conscious communities. I I can't stop. It just endless flow. Yeah. You're dominated by domination. You could say it's dominating me or just, but you're also dominated by, you know, the idea of staying married to Jenny. Sure. Yeah. You know, and you're either dominated by it by like, okay, well that's the ball and chain. Uh-huh. Right, which is the common. <clears throat> sure, I don't know if it's the common, but it's certainly common enough that it's a saying. That's right, right, that people yeah. are dominated by their marriages. Yeah, they're dominated by their relationships, and they're either dominated it in a way of now I have to, and I'm you know the old ball and chain. Yeah, yeah, you know, or they're dominated by it by I gave my word, mm-hmm. you know, to love, honor, cherish. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to find a way to do that in a way that leaves me with power and freedom and self-expression. And I'm going to be dominated by the self-expression of it all. I'm going to be dominated by the non-strivingness of it. I'm going to give myself permission to play with it Mm -hmm. and be dominated by if it's, you know, it it, like that and inside that world Mm -hmm. where dominating is, you know, like I said, not optional. It's you don't, it's not that. Let's see. I don't know quite. I'm just sort of exploring it now. Um, yeah. You know, you're not, it's not always going to be fun in the moment. You know, the idea that it's got to be, um, have the, ex, you know, there's plenty of time in my relationship with Kale that doesn't occur like fun. You know, um, but I'm committed, you know, that it wind up in that space. Mm. You know, I was thinking about this thing that just happened with my kids. Mm. Um, and I deleted the photos of it, but I could show you the way the sink was. I came home, we, Kale and I went out and, um, here, I'll, I'll get to the pictures of it because it's worth showing because <laughs> you'll see. I think it's a really, so for those of you not on video, you should pop on video to see this, but I'm going to see your reaction to it as a father. Um, what you see about it as I get the pictures up. Funny. Cause I already have my own idea, whatever it is you're going to show me based on, you said dishes, you said we went out. <laughs> Cause I already have like a story in my head of what you're going to show me. Yeah. And Oh, did I do? De- I think I deleted them or Oh, no, maybe not. Uh, no, here. Yeah. Okay. I can share my screen here. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Kale and I went away for a week. Oh, my God. He came home, and their only instruction was to keep the house clean. And I came home, and the sink looked like this. <laughs> wow. Uh, right. Oh my God. I came home and this is literally what the sink looked like. Wow. Right. That and I was, I was dominated. I was like, 
dominated by my reaction to this, <laughs> right? And my reaction to this was, what the fuck did I do wrong as a dad? <laughs> how, how, but not did what did I do wrong as a dad? Uh -huh. My, my, I was dominated by what the fuck is wrong with those kids? <laughs> I mean, in a million years, I can't imagine leaving the sink looking like that. I, I've seen hoarder houses with less yeah, yeah, offensive yeah. Mm. sinks than this. Right, right. Right. I was like, this, this is, uh, mm. it, 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 it literally took me 24 hours to get off it about this, to get into some space about it oh, man. that wasn't, this is wrong. Yeah. They're wrong. Yeah. You know, to the point where at some, at a point in there, Kale and I were even in an argument about it, like where she said, look, you better call someone because you can't talk to me like this and you can't talk to them like this. You are not, you are talking about goal orientation. Uh, I was yeah. like, I was going to, my goal was to kill them. <laughs> and, uh, she's like, that's just not going to produce anything. That's uh -huh. not going to make anything happen. You know, you can't keep talking like this, right? You have to get yourself unhooked from how wrong they are about this because it's not going to produce any result. Mm. And uh, mm. and I did. It took me 24 hours and I did. I called someone and I just got myself as responsible for, you know, the upset, you know, the my unfulfilled expectation, my thwarted intention, my undelivered communication. Those were my issues and we got to communicate i got to communicate it all like from this is what my expectation was this is what my intention was this is what my <clears throat> this is what i need to say about it and one of the things i needed to say about it was um this is this sh looks to me like you speaking to the kids mm -hmm. um and for those of you that don't know me my kids are 17 and 20 mm -hmm. um this looks to me like you have the, ex you live your life, like you're entitled to something, mm. you know, like this is not partnership. This is like, mm. who, who do you think is going to clean this? What do you think is supposed to uh, What are you thinking here? You know? Mm -hmm. And they got to communicate what they were thinking and how it was for them. And, and one of the things that came up was, well, you would never leave your workplace like this. They both work in restaurants. Uh, uh, and um, I was like, you would never leave work like this. Hmm. You know, what are you thinking? How do you leave the house like this? And I got interested hmm. in how they left, what they were thinking and how they, and they were thinking they were going to get to it and they just didn't get to it yet. And, and the thing that showed up was, well, at work, they have a closing checklist. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, isn't that interesting? So we made a closing checklist for the house. And everyone took on different aspects of the house. And my daughter literally just yesterday cleaned the fridge because that was her wow. thing that she took on to keep clean was the fridge. And I'm taking on the pantry and my wife is taking on the vitamins, which is always filling the counter. Uh -huh. Wow. My wife has a pharmacy of vitamins <laughs> and supplements. And, uh, hmm. and the kitchen for the last really three weeks has been hmm. really impeccable. Wow out of you know hmm. that right so there's a goal orientation there that the house be livable and workable for everyone and everyone takes care of their own stuff and no one makes it you know all the things that we would want came out of you know that space of okay well if this is what we as a community are going to invent together how do we get there together hmm. and uh they're not unwilling there was just no you know, set specific agreement and then access to the fulfillment of that agreement. Yeah. And, uh, and really since then the house has been better than it's been any time in the last 20 years. Wow. Honestly, wow. um, out of having created that, but there's that, uh, we've, we've mm -hmm. gone down a tunnel beyond yeah, yeah. No. ideation and execution, but your access to execution in a lot of times is this world of enrollment where you, you know, are, you detach your self from the right, wrong, good, badness of it. 
Mm -hmm. and you stand in the possibility of it and you stand in being responsible for the fulfillment of the possibility of it. And you look together as to how you were going to fulfill in that. Yeah. I really uh, like your word curiosity. I feel like, you know, you got curious about it and in the space of execution, if you feel angst around execution, getting curious about how it could be playful, how it could be self-expressed, however, whatever the, the work is, that'd be interesting to get curious about. Yeah. I think our access to execution and powerful execution mm-hmm. and execution that matters, mm-hmm. you know, that fulfills the intention is, can you fulfill, you know, I think the thing that's uh, inappropriately dominating about it, you know, or uh, disempoweringly in dominating about it. The thing that's yeah. unworkably dominating when we talk about domination, unworkably dominated by it is where it lacks enrollment, where it comes from right, wrong, good, bad, when it comes from this sense of I have to, and I'm supposed to, and I should, and that whole world that yeah. comes in from the outside into the current reality as a as a truth versus, okay, standing in the fulfillment of the thing, you know, a million people or whatever it is that I'm up to, standing in the fulfillment of it, what's my purely the fulfillment of it without making the current reality wrong. Yeah. Right. If it's not designed to fix something, if it's just designed to create a world that's, I say matters Mm -hmm. in this case, a house that works, a house that doesn't look like that sink. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, how do we get there? And there's a, a pathway opens up. Mm-hmm. when one gets uh, um, is willing to be responsible for what they put in the space when they get i'm putting this in there yeah, yeah so we get to look to see together how we could live and there was surprisingly no pushback and it has legs you mm-hmm. know it's been a month wow and um hmm. where there's a huge past where that was never going to happen yeah and that's really the power of enrollment in a lot of ways is that future yeah. got gets created and tended to that way. And I think that's, you know, clearly the space that my marriage lives inside of, you know, that's the difference between the old ball and chain and the, the possibility of marriage. Like mm-hmm. what, what would honor what we said on that day yeah. in this moment? Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, it's the standing in the presence of that possibility, the standing in the presence of Mm. the nothing, anything space and saying, okay, well, standing in nothing, what are we going to create now in this moment, in this very moment, what are we going to create now? Is this action that I'm thinking of taking, you know, like whatever, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know the, I don't. I don't remember ever thinking kale was a ball and chain. So I don't really have that as a. Yeah. I get the example though. What's that? I get the example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, but if for anyone whose marriage is in the old ball and chain stage, you know, mm-hmm. there's all there is to do is to go back to the originating intent of the marriage mm-hmm. and standing in, okay, well, with this current circumstance that I'm experiencing ball and chain inside of, does it hold up? when I look at it from the light of the originating intent of the thing. So, you know, does the, if the execution of something is becoming dominating or uh, unfulfilling or disempowering in some way, you go back to, okay, well, what was the original intent? What was the ideation? What was the possibility in the ideation? And then looking to see, okay, well, standing in just in that possibility, standing in the idea, right? What's an action that would fulfill on it from nothing. What could I do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you could, and I think you could um, substitute marriage for work. You could take that exact same thing you just said and be like, go back, you know, when your work begins to feel like a ball and chain. Right. When the thing you're trying to execute on feels like a ball and chain, you can go back to that originating, you know, what, what, why did I choose this? What am I here for? And you can start to get curious about what's possible. Yeah. Yeah, so many people, I mean, that's, you know, really the whole Monday phenomenon. I have to go to work, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, What's yeah. almost always forgotten is that you are working wherever you're working. You have whatever job you have or career you have. 
you have it by virtue of a request you made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, no one, you know, no one wakes up in the morning and has a job. You have to go in and apply for that job. You had to have requested uh-huh. of someone the opportunity to work there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Couldn't have gotten there otherwise. You, there was no other way to do it except it was your request. And it's the abdication of responsibility that is, mm. it, I, I, I'm willing to say in every case, wow. unless you show me a case where it's not, um, in every case, it's the abdication of responsibility that's the source of being dominated by a, you know, a disempowering context. You forget I, that you requested it. I, I think we should have a course called Mindful Employment, and I think companies would hire us to come in and speak to their their teams so they could their teams could get <laughs> present I'm to you. Who shows this? <laughs> Those of you interested, please go to our website, themindfulceo.com forward slash contact. Yeah, Make sure you we, drop us a line. I would love. I would be happy to speak to anyone's <laughs> employees, and I bet in I bet in ninety minutes. Oh yeah, right. You know, one ninety-minute session. We could have, you know, maybe two. Maybe it's a follow-up afterwards to see how that's going to tweak it. But it's yeah. it is really it is shockingly simple. I think for people to get when they get it from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. That oh yeah, that's right. This was my request, and I you know, and then there's all the stuff about workplaces where you know management is. Uh, operating way that's inconsistent with the originating intent, you know, that it's, um, you know, I think it's the kind of thing that needs constant tending to. Hmm. That's not, I, I I said that sort of playfully, but I'm, that's, that's really good though, because it takes both sides of management leadership, employees and team, like that both, both can take some sense of uh, accountability, responsibility for uh, being enrolled in what we're doing here. And then, you know, a marriage is, I remember when I got married, that the guy that married us said, you know, marriage is a hundred percent, hundred percent, you know, it's not 50, yep. 50, it's you're all in and I'm all in and we're going to, you know, let's, let's go create something magical. You know, that's, that would change a company's trajectory completely, but we get into that angst of execution from management and hand trying to hit a deadline or from a team member trying to, uh, uh, you know, live up to management's deadlines and timelines. And we get into these like, Ang- the angstiness of of things rather than the possibility of things. Hmm, I think that's good. Okay, well, I'm making the official invitation to all of you, all five of you listening, that if you have a uh, a company that wants to bring in some t- two bald white guys to talk about, you know, having your your workplace enrolled in, <laughs> you know, what's possible. Let's go. Yeah. Give yeah. It and and if you're a management, if you're in management, it's funny. This is the um. You know, my takeaways that I put in the introduction of my last book, you know, am I doing it right? Um, Hmm. Is very much that the pitfalls here, because it clearly takes, okay, connecting to your staff's said shittily hopes, dreams, aspirations, like what they, what they were out to accomplish when they requested the opportunity to work there. Yeah. And you need to be clear about what those are for the individuals because Bob has a different possibility of being there, has a different intention of being there than Sally does. Yeah. And so keeping each individual in mind and you need, and more often than not, the pitfall there is management doesn't have time to fuck with each individual person, just wants everyone just to do the work. I just want the kids to keep the sink clean. Right, right. I don't, I I do not have time Hmm. or interest in finding out what's in the way. I, it's not your, you ask the work here. This is the fucking job. Just do your job. (laughs) And I mean, that's uh, in a certain sense, that's accurate. It's not inaccurate. Sure. But that's why you keep blowing through employees Uh is because you're not taking the time to make sure they see a path to fulfill on what matters to them. Yeah. Because and standing and they did ask to work here, right? Then are you tending to what they originally asked to work for? Mm-hmm. And are you making sure they have what they need to fulfill on that? You know, was, uh, I'm going back to the Seahawks again. Um, here we go. Uh, <laughs> in that 34, in that 37 to three loss last week, 
um, they were interviewing Pete Carroll after the game about there's this huge noise about replacing the quarterback um, and fine, whatever. Um, and they, they were asking him, when is there ever a time where you would switch quarterbacks in the middle of the year? Hmm. And he said, yeah, I mean, you know, the condition is it needs to be really obvious, you know, it needs to be a really, it needs to be obvious that this guy is not going to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Needs to be really clear and obvious. And then he didn't spend a lot of time on this, but you could hear what he did say was, you know, you need to make sure did we set him up to win? Yeah. You know, does he have what he needs, meaning the right plays, the right players, the right other people participating, the people around him? Did the coaches all get their jobs done? And you could hear Pete doing all the work in the background to make sure that he's, you know, clear that the each player has everything they need to get the job done before you call the shot and say, this player is not going to get the job done because somehow they're not either willing or physically able right. to get the job done. But it's a constant marriage of all those components so from a management perspective, it's critical that you're looking at all the constitutive components of each person getting their job done. Do they have the tools, do the partners, do they have the, are they in the presence of the possibility, all the things you as management are accountable for that they have, if they have everything that they need and they're now either physically or mentally unable or unwilling to get the job done, great, then it's time for you to move on to someone else who is, but it's a mistake to pretend that that person somehow Mm. is just all of a sudden, you know, Mm -hmm. not the right person for the job. Yeah. You, you gotta really get all that up. Yeah. That's good. And, uh, Mm. no, I, I don't, you know, I don't think there's a better coach. There's certainly not a better orientation for a coach to have than that. I don't think, you know, uh, in this case, a manager, someone who's managing people, um, you know, do they have a pathway? Uh, and then that's becomes your execution, you know, manager's execution is empowering the employees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Empowering the players. That's your execution. Yeah. 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 So maybe an hour and a half with the management and then an hour and a half with the staff. All right, that sounds fun. Let's go. I, I think we could do it. I, I know do we it. could do it, right? Yeah. Good. Fun. All right. I don't know that. I, I think that's a, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in there to sort of parse out, but I think yeah. that's the, you know, the, the takeaway for me out of this, the thing I got sorted out for myself is the domination and why I hate execution is anytime that I've um, abdicated responsibility for the, fulfillment of of the goal you know yeah. anytime where i've said that the goal is you know i think the non-striving part is striving for it as if it were inherently important right like there's some inherent characteristics to it versus no i made all this up mm-hmm. i'm the one who said yeah right. you know and standing inside there let's go hmm. let's play sense. let's play love it well, for those of you listening, we're getting close to launching the Mindful CEO uh, yep. Mastermind. If you're interested in being in a in a, in a room, virtual room, um, maybe at some point a physical room uh, with others who are having these kinds of inquiries, you know, thinking at this level, um, this would be a good place to hang out. You can go to themindfulceo.com, check us out, and um, we'll see you next time, Aaron. Peace. Peace.